Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Easy SAP ABAP. In this episode, I've had several requests previously uh, for field symbols. So we're going to be talking today about field symbols. Field symbols, what the heck are they? How can I use them? And how do they, how do they benefit my ABAP programs? Those are going to be the main points we're going to address today. So a field symbol is kind of a difficult concept to wrap your head around if you've only been an ABAP programmer. If you've uh, worked in languages like C or C++, other languages that use pointers, a field symbol is essentially a pointer in SAP style. So I'm going to assume that you don't know C and C++, and I'm going to go ahead and take this from the ground up, and we're going to work at understanding field symbols. So to start with, I'm going to go to SE38. We've created a blank program here, Z underscore field underscore symbols. I'll go into change mode, and we'll start by using some regular ABAP syntax that we've already learned about. We'll say data, give it test one, type string, value, hello, world. So this is just a regular variable called test one. If we write out the value to the screen, what we're gonna see is just a simple output that says, hello world. Now, let's go ahead and create a second variable, just to illustrate a point. Test2 type string. We're not going to assign it a value, but we're going to say test2 equals test1. And then we can write out test2. So let's go ahead and write this out. And I'm going to illustrate a point here. Whenever we assign this variable, test2 to test1, we're not assigning the reference, so we'll see both of them say hello world. So we've assigned test2 to test1. Now let's say test2 equals hello SAP. We'll go ahead and at the end of all of these assignments write out test1 and test2. So what we're going to expect to see is typical behavior up until this point. Test2 is equal to test1, so test2 is now equal to the value of hello world. And then we're going to take test2 and equate it, make it equal to the value of hello SAP. So at this point in our ABAP program, test2 will equal hello SAP, but test1 will still equal hello world. Even though we've assigned the value of test1 to test2, and the reason this isn't going to change this initial variable test one is because this assignment operator in ABAP is based on value so we're assigning the value of this variable to this so if I write this out to the screen I'm going to see hello world I'm going to see hello SAP each separately written out to the screen hello world hello SAP so that's how variables in ABAP work. Variables in ABAP are passed by value, so we assign the value of something to the value of another thing. So now let's get rid of test two. Instead of creating a second regular variable called test two, let's create a field symbol. So a field symbol, like I said, if you guys are familiar with C or C++, this is a pointer for all intents and purposes, but a field symbol will assign the reference of something to a variable. So now, under field symbols, we have to give it a name. We'll call it, let's just call it FS for short. And a field symbol, you'll see I've got this in red right here. I can't just call it FS. I have to surround it with angle brackets, so that's a less than and greater than sign. And we can give it a type, so type string. Now, we can't just say field symbol equals test one. We have to use another keyword, assign. So before a field symbol is assigned, it's of course unassigned, we can use the syntax is assigned to check whether a field symbol has been assigned. If we try to access a field symbol that has not been assigned, we'll get a short dump in our program and uh, it will uh, abruptly quit on us. So. What we're going to do now is assign test1 to our field symbol. So now we can write out test1 and our field symbol, and we should see that both our field symbol 
and test one are assigned to test one's uh, memory, hello world. So how is this different than having you know two different regular variables assigned with this data statement? Well, when we assign our field symbol, what we're doing is saying assign the reference variable test one to field symbol. So for all intents and purposes, this reference field this field symbol fs is going to reference the initial variable test one. So whatever we do to fs is going to happen to test one. And that's the way to think about it when we have a field symbol. So now if we run this program, we're going to see something kind of strange. We're going to see test one and test two are the same thing. We can actually output this on a new line just to make it a little more clear and go ahead and run it. Let's activate this. And we can run it. So we see they're the same thing. Now, normally, if we had two variables instead of a variable and a field symbol, if we changed test one's value, it wouldn't change the value of our second variable, which is fs. But since this is a field symbol, let's go ahead and change the value of ss. We can use, or of fs, we can use uh, the field symbol name equal. We'll call it hello SAP. So what's going to happen now is we're assigning this value to field symbol. It's going to also affect the underlying reference variable test1. So test1 and fs are going to equal hello SAP. So we've seen here, this is going to assign both of them to the value hello SAP because it references the same variable. So when we assign fs to test1, we're saying fs equals test1, but in the most literal sense. This fs refers directly to test1. So this is our first you know, little introduction to field symbols. Whatever we assign the field symbol to, it's going to directly affect the variable that it's assigned to. So let's get rid of this assign test to fs1. Now, another thing we can do with field symbols, because we don't know if they've been assigned, we can say if fs is assigned. Let's go ahead and say write field symbol is assigned. Otherwise, write not assigned. So we can go ahead and check this code, activate it, and we'll go ahead and run it. And what we're going to see, since this field symbol has been declared, but not assigned, we should get the output not assigned. Let me activate this code again. And we'll see in the output not assigned because we haven't assigned this field symbol to anything. But if we come back here and uncomment this assign test one to FS and activate the code again and run it, we see field symbol is assigned. So you're going to be using this is assigned or is not assigned quite frequently when you're working with field symbols because if we don't assign it to anything, then we say FS equals test. What we're going to experience here when we check and activate this code and then run it we're going to get an error. We're going to get a short dump. And that short dump is going to say field symbol has not been assigned yet. So when we work with field symbols, we always need to make sure that they are assigned. Otherwise, we get this short dump and we have to go back and go back into our code again. So why is this relevant? Why is this important? I don't want to go into it completely in this video as to why we can use field symbols for crazy dynamic programming things like looking at an ALV tree, getting the currently select selected row, getting its you know internal table row type into a variable of a field symbol. I'm not going to go into that. We'll come across it naturally in some of my later videos where I get into more advanced programming concepts. But just know right now that it is a quicker way to access something. I'm accessing not just, you know, a value, but I'm accessing the original reference of that variable. 
And the most common place you'll see this is in internal tables. So let's go ahead and do a demonstration on that now. I'll create an internal table called GTSPFLI. It's going to be a table of type SPFLI. Let's go ahead and put some data in it too. Select everything from SPFLI into table GTSPFLI. So now at this point, what we have is an internal table, GTSPFLI, with all the data from database table SPFLI selected into it. So what you would typically do if you want to modify data in this, you would create a structure, we'll call it GSSPFLI, and it's type SPFLI. So GSSPFLI is a structure of the table type. So now we can say loop at GTSPFLI into GSSPFLI. Let's say on each loop we're just going to write out the GSSPFLI. Let's say carrier ID and in loop. So now we can go ahead and activate this code, run it, and we'll see each of the carrier IDs from our SPFLI internal table output to the screen. So we'll go ahead and show that. We see our different carrier IDs. So now let's just say that we wanted to loop this table and we wanted to change something. GTSPFLI carrier ID equals, let's just call it a double question mark. Then we would have to use another internal table operator here, modify GTSPFLI from GSSPFLI. So what we're gonna see here, if we check this code activated, it's going to modify all of the carrier ID field from our internal table, and it's gonna output, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm not writing anything. So let's go back and loop this table one more time. Group, loop at GTSPFLI into GSSPFLI. Can't talk right here tonight, guys. And then we'll write our carrier ID. So now we're going to modify every row, set the carrier ID to question mark, question mark. Then we'll loop back through the table. We'll go ahead and write out all of the carrier IDs. So we see it's all been set to this double question mark. We could also do something like this, CL demo output. This is a class that I like to use for example programs. It will show you the output of an internal table visibly on the screen. So this is going to display our internal table on the screen after we've made the modifications to it. So we'll go ahead and run this code and we see our internal table has been modified. It's got the question mark, question mark. If we comment out this code, of course, it's not going to have the question mark, question mark. It'll be whatever our original code was. So it's got the different carrier IDs. So let's do something interesting now. Let's modify this internal table without using the modify statement. So how do we do it without using the modify statement, you might ask? Well, this is where field symbols really, really shine because this is a way more performant way of doing this operation. It allows us to directly modify that row of that internal table without using an update or a modify statement. So we have our GTSPFLI. We've selected data into our GTSPFLI. Now we're going to declare a field symbol We'll just call it fs underscore spfli and I can say type line of spfli. So now what we can, well, excuse me, have to line up an internal table here, gt spfli. So we've created a field symbol that is a line of type gt spfli, which of course is just of type database table spfli. What am I doing here? I think I need to do like line of. Excuse me. I, I, we don't, you don't use field symbols all day long. So some of this syntax, you can just you know highlight field symbols in your code and hit F1, and you'll be taken to the F1 help in the uh, actual ABAP help. And you can see these different additions, these different uh, 
you know, syntax quirks that it has going on. Again, I don't work with field symbols all day, every day. So some of this stuff you're going to have, you know, a little bit of, a little bit different things going on here. So we can see all of our different field symbols, the typing, all the different additions we can do here. Type any table. We can, we can even do generic things. We'll get into this in later videos. So that's the things we can do with field symbols. Feel free to read that on your own time. We're going to use, in this case, like line of GTSPFLI, which means that we have declared a work area. We've declared a structure just like GSSPFLI, except for it's a field symbol. So now we can do our loop statement again, loop at GTSPFLI. And we don't say into our field symbol, we say assigning, because remember our field symbol has to be assigned for us to be able to access it. So we're going to loop at GTSPFLI assigning fs underscore spfli and of course if we write out the value of fs spfli carrier id we're going to see our carrier id written to the screen and it will be whatever we selected from the database let's go ahead and run it we see our carrier id but the beauty of field symbols is we can take this we can get rid of this right statement. We can say FS SPFLI carrier ID equals, let's just say question mark, question mark. So now what really cool is gonna happen here is we're gonna be able to assign this carrier ID to our work area, but our work area is going to be a field symbol which references the line of the internal table. So by modifying this variable here with this equals operator, we're saying, modify the work area of the internal table, which is a field symbol, which refers to the actual row of the internal table. So now we don't have to use modify GTSPFLI from field symbol. We don't have to do that because it's modifying the actual row of the internal table. So now if I bring back this demo output of our uh, of our uh, internal table, we're going to see that something really cool has happened when we run this code. So we see here our carrier ID has been set to all the question marks that we wanted. And that happened from assigning this field symbols value to question marks. But we didn't have to use the modify statement. So you can kind of imagine how this is going to work. You know, field symbols reference something and the original value is going to be changed because we're modifying this variable that references something by reference, not by value. And the default ABAP behavior when working with variables is going to be to modify something or assign something by value, not by reference. But field symbols allow us to assign something you know, by reference. So again, this is kind of going to be a, over a lot of you guys' head, and it was over my head the first time I ever looked at it. But if you familiarize yourself with another programming language like C, where there are pointers and there's, you know, assignments of pointers, then this is going to be kind of old hat for you. And it's no big, you know, no big crazy revelation. But this is something to keep in mind. This is what we use field symbols for, what they're capable of. And also, you know, using a field symbol in this way, where we assign the field symbol, directly modify the field symbol, which modifies the internal table. This is a much more performance uh, beneficial operation than looping an internal table, assigning it to a work area, modifying the internal table from the work area. Instead, we're taking our internal table, looping into a field symbol, modifying the field symbol. That field symbol modifies the internal table. So that is a quick rundown on field symbols, guys. If you guys have any sort of questions, I know you will because this is not easy stuff. Please leave a comment. I'll try and make a video to follow up on it. And we can hopefully in the next, you know, chapters of some of my playlists that I got going on and some of my future videos get into talking about, well, why, you know, what other things can I do with a field symbol other than looping an internal table or, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be some good stuff. So stick around. Thanks so much for watching. As always, any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much. Bye.